Hi, good evening, all of you. I hope you all are doing fine. Today we are here to discuss the early Tudor age questions. Although the time frame is is uh, long enough, but we don't have that many important things to discuss. But still, I feel that uh, this is a this is an age we have to discuss and. Uh, there are a few questions uh, that uh, can be considered from this age. And that's the reason why I have included this age called the early Tudor age. I hope I am audible and visible to all of you. If you can kindly write in the chat box whether I'm audible and visible so that we can move ahead and uh, participants will join in the due course of time. I'm sure about it. I hope so far you all are enjoying these quiz sessions. <clears throat> And uh, I will continue uh, with these sessions. As I told you all that, I will continue with these sessions till the postmodern age. The entire gamut I will go through. And uh, I'll try to see what can be what are the most important questions in this entire phase and uh, we'll can discuss about it and can be helpful for all of us i told you these sessions are not to test test anybody but just to a uh, kind of brainstorming kind of session after dinner i'm sure some of you all have already had your dinner or just prior before you go for your dinner we can have this sessions every day and uh, I'm sure some questions that come out of these sessions uh, will be helpful to all of us. And with that, we start with uh, the early Tudor age. And the first question of the early Tudor age is Clastuglin's El Corti Yeno Castu Castiglins C A S T I G L I O N E Apostrophe as yes. Clastiglins, El Corti, Gino, or Gino, whatever it's a proper noun, so you can pronounce it the way you want. Became the basis of a very important text later on. Can you name the text? Balsdair Castiglin, important work, El Cortigiano, became the basis of a very important work by Spencer. Can you tell me the name of that important work? Uh, Baldesser Castiglione's El Cortigino became the basis of a very important work by Spencer and the work's name is The Fairy Queen. So I thought that this might be an important uh, question. And Baldessar Castellin, we all know, was an Italian nobleman and courtier. Now we go to the next question. And the next writer, very important writer. Can you tell me the author of The Schoolmaster? The author of The Schoolmaster. Who is the author of The Schoolmaster? 
can you tell me the author of the schoolmaster you can type in the chat box very easy question i guess author of schoolmaster i guess it's a very easy question yes bisrajit mondal you are absolutely right it's an easy question uh, roger asked him and it's an he is an important writer roger asked him is an important writer as well can you tell me the first work of roger asked him what is the name of the first work of roger asked him can you uh, tell me the name of the first work by roger asked him first book i mean right bisrajit mondal is toxophilus absolutely right you get a virtual chocolate from my side till the time we meet physically now toxophilus uh, as bisrajit mondal says uh, is and he is absolutely right it's the first work by roger aschim uh, can you tell me what's the meaning of uh, toxophilus what is the meaning of toxophilus by roger aschim what is the meaning of toxophilus by roger aschim anybody can you try the meaning of toxophilus by roger aschim art of archery uh, toxophilus bisujit uh, toxophilus is is a book on the art of archery but the meaning of toxophilus is the lover of the bow bow and arrow so the lover of the bow is called the toxophilus and uh, you also should remember that this is the first book in english on archery okay first book on archery in english is toxophilus uh we just discussed about uh, the author of schoolmaster that is uh, Roger Aschim. Now, few things that I would like to share about this book, that is the Schoolmaster. I thought of sharing something, some information as well. And what is the information? First of all, can you tell me the year in which this book was published? The Schoolmaster. Can you tell me the year in which the uh, book by roger aschim the schoolmaster was published which is the year of the publication of the book the schoolmaster by roger aschim and then i can proceed further i'll talk something about this important work the year in which this book uh, called uh, the schoolmaster by roger aschim was published I'll just give you a hint. This book he started writing in fifteen sixty three, right, Somjoti? Absolutely right. It was published in fifteen seventy posthumously. It was published posthumously in fifteen seventy, and uh, the main subject matter of the book is it basically deals with the teaching of Latin. Okay, the book mainly deals with the teaching of Latin, but. you also have to keep in mind that this book you know it, it was not intended for schools but it was intended for the upbringing of the private gentlemen and noblemen in houses noble houses gentlemen in noble houses this was not for men for schools so this was meant for a higher strata of the society we can all well understand the society in which we are talking about it so yeah and uh, this book uh, It talks about the psychological basis of learning as well as uh, the holistic development of a person. Okay, the holistic development of a person, uh, which in 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 uh, which uh, which deals about the uh, morality, the ideal, uh, the the academic, that the intellectual personality. So overall, it talks about the holistic development of a 
personality and was meant for a selective strata of the society. I thought this to share with you uh, this information on Roger Ascham's uh, The School Master, published in 1570. He started writing in uh, 1563. Unfortunately, he died and this book was published in 1570 because Roger Ascham, as you all know, died in 1568, right? And one more thing that I would like to inform you about uh, Toxophilus is this book is written in the form of a dialogue. Okay, Toxophilus is written, the book is written in the form of a dialogue. Let us now uh, move ahead to another um, lesser known writer, uh, that is Thomas Eliot. Thomas Eliot. Uh, Thomas Eliot uh, wrote in prose. In fact, uh, he popularized it a lot. Uh, Thomas Eliot's famous book is The Book Named the Governor. That's the famous book by Thomas Eliot. And he wrote a, he wrote a very important book, uh, that is, How to Take Care of One's Health. Because this is pandemic time. We have, most of us have suffered. Can you imagine this book talking about, in the 16th century, about health, how to take care of health? This is a book which is written by Thomas Eliot. Can you tell me the name of the book by Thomas Eliot, which talks about how to take care of health? Anything? How to take care of health? Castle of Health. Ritika Singh. Kudos to you. Kudos to you. Absolutely kudos. It's a very, very... Thomas Eliot is not a very famous figure. And if you are able to answer this question, that means you are very, very well prepared. Ritika Singh, thank you very much. And uh, kudos to you and a virtual chocolate to you. Till the time we meet. I am sure we will meet somewhere in the near future. The world is a very small place. Now, let us go to the next question. Now we come to Erasmus. Okay. Uh, Erasmus basically was a Dutch humanist and scholar. Thomas More was a very good friend of Erasmus. Okay. Can you tell me The book by Thomas, uh, uh, by by Erasmus, name the book by Erasmus, whose title is a pun, P-U-N, pun on the name of Thomas More. I told you he's a, he was a very good friend of Thomas More. Uh, can you name the book by Erasmus? The title of which is a pun on the name of Thomas More. Name of the book. Of course, it's a friendly pun, but it's a pun. What's the name of the book? Any idea? No idea. Okay, so I'm not getting anything. So I assume that y'all are not aware of it. In fact, I was also not aware of it that much. Uh, we all know the name of the book. The name of the book is Praise of Folly, which was published in 1511. Praise of Folly. I'm sure we all know the Praise of Folly. The Praise of Folly, which was published in 1511. And uh, the title, The Praise of Folly, is a pun on the name of Thomas More. And I interesting. <laughs> I hope you all are 
yeah praise of folly right the praise of folly right right som jyoti you are also very well prepared i know i'm sure you will clear exams very soon competitive exams that's good that's a good signal now let me move ahead with uh, the next writer of the age we are talking about the early tudor age who is the next writer in the line uh thomas cromwell thomas cromwell now there is a character called oliver cromwell you remember i am talking about thomas cromwell so oliver cromwell was his great great grand nephew great great grand nephew who was he oliver cromwell we are talking about thomas cromwell he was a strong advocate of english reformation and one of the ministers uh, to henry viii nothing much but uh, hilary mantel we all know the booker prize winner novel you know uh, two two novels one is wolf hall and the other is bring up bodies wolf hall and bring up bodies by hilary mantel thomas well uh, thomas cromwell finds a lot of mention there in those books so from that perspective thomas cromwell is kind of you should just know because he is the great great his great great grand nephew is oliver cromwell this is one next we go to the another writer and the writer is john skelton we are all aware of john skelton skelton is very famous for for what skelton is very famous for please tell me what is john skelton very famous for john skelton is skelton is very famous for what can you tell me john skelton is famous for no i hope you all are spreading the word of this 9 pm uh, quiz every day to your friends to your colleagues i hope you all are spreading the word i hope more people will come and watch our our live streaming sessions please spread the word it will help others also and we all can enjoy right so uh, john skelton was very famous for for uh, this particular <clears throat> what tell me skelton is famous for what skelton is famous for skeltonic words skeltonic words like irregular energetic satirical words Skel uh, sorry uh, poetry that is skeltonic words irregular satirical energetic and there is a close resemblance with john john dunn's poetry skeltonic words i hope you all are aware of it right can you tell me one of the important works by skelton uh, john skelton can you tell me the name of the work by john skelton the important work by john skelton john skelton a part of which was later used by spencer in his fairy queen shepherd's calendar can you tell me a very famous work by john skelton which the name that name of the work by john skelton was used by spencer in three of his works and that's the reason why this question becomes important this work the name of this work by skelton inspired spencer very good gorangodas it is called in clout 
Colin Cloud. It's just that the spelling is a little wrong. C O L Y N, Colin. C O L Y N, Colin. No, C O L Y N, Colin. Cloud, C L O U T E, Cloud. C L O U T E, Cloud. Colin Cloud. This was used by Spencer. There was this hint, you know, because Spencer wrote one called uh, Colin Cloud uh, Comes Home, right? This is one which Spencer himself wrote. Fairy Queen, Shepherd's Calendar. These are the three works. Fairy Queen, Shepherd's Calendar and Colin, uh, Colin Cloud Come Again. Uh, sorry, come, uh, Comes Home. These are the three works in which Spencer has used the name of Colin Cloud. And that's the reason why John Skelton's Colin Cloud becomes an important and potential question. Now comes the man of the age, early Tudor, that is Thomas More. Thomas More. What would, I, what would I ask about Thomas More? Do I have anything interesting? That is, uh, I want to see because there are few, four, four five. Uh, because uh, I wanted to put uh, something. Okay, we all know that Thomas More wrote Europe, uh, Utopia, right? We all know that. That's uh, something we are all aware of. And uh, can you tell me uh, the, the language in which Thomas More wrote Utopia in 1516? What was the language in 1516 in which Thomas More wrote U Utopia? What was the language he used? Because my next question is related to this question. So, Thomas More wrote Utopia in 1516. Can you tell me the language that he used? Latin. Very good. Gorangodash. Very good. Latin. Fine. So, my next question is, yes, Marapali Joseph. Latin. Absolutely. So, my next question is related to this question. And what is my next question? I think you are already aware of it. But still, I will ask the question. What is the question? Ritika, you are absolutely right. Latin. But my next question is related to this question. And of course, I think you have an idea about the next question. But still, I will ask the question. And the question is that Utopia was translated into English in which year and by who? Two in one question. Utopia was translated in English in which year and by who? I'm interested to see the name. Who translated it into English? I know that the year is very... Yes, absolutely, Ritika, 1551. This is an easy question. But who translated it into English? Who translated it into English? 1551. Easy question. I am sure you also agree to it. 1551, very easy question. Uh... I think thousand times it has been asked. But the real question is who translated it into English? Who translated Utopia into English in 1551? What is the name of the person who translated Utopia in English in 1551? Any idea? I'm sure some of you all will have an idea. Please tell me who translated it. No? Who translated Utopia into English in 1551? The answer is Ralph. Robinson, Somjoti Banerjee, absolutely right. But what took you so long? I was expecting it beforehand. Ralph Robinson, but yes, you got a virtual chocolate once again. Utopia was influenced by travelogues. We are all aware of it. 
we are all aware of the influence of travelogue on utopia but one particular kind or one particular travelogue was very famous from which it is said that utopia was very highly influenced what is that travelogue name the travelogue which played a pivotal role in the influence of in influencing utopia can you tell me the name of the travelogue what is the name of the travelogue what is the name of the travelogue no amerigo right ritika right just to give you this this is the full form amerigo vespucci okay right right so we keep it as amerigo vespucci that is what vespucci account of the travel right so the answer generally is amerigo vespucci you all also can share your opinions okay with my question something related to the question you can share your opinion or you can share some extra information which can be value addition for all of us in the gathering right you all are also most welcome to participate just type it in the chat box because we are all here learners we are here to learn somebody had to take the initiation that is me but i am also a novice i am here to learn right you all are far sincere man <laughs> you all are far better it's good to see you all are so you know to the point you all you'll remember so many things name the you know in the island of utopia uh elected representatives were called by some names in the island of if you go to the uh go to the story of utopia i think some of you all are aware of the story of utopia so the elected representations in the island uh in the islands of utopia had some names can you tell me the names what were the names of the elected representatives in the islands of utopia any idea no islands of utopia what are the elected representatives called any idea what are the elected elected representatives called in the island of utopia you can see in the chat box is called the siphograntus and tranniborus siphograntus and tranniborus these are the names of the elected representatives in the island of utopia they were called by these names Hmm. There's a writer called Alexander Barclay. Are you aware of this writer, Alexander Barclay? Who was during this time born in 1550 1584 and died in 1552, Alexander Barclay? Are you aware of this writer Alexander Barclay
are you aware of this writer alexander barclay because i wanted i want to ask a question no okay fine alexander barclay i also found this writer to be little unknown so i like the the work that he wrote alexander barclay it's called the ship of fools okay ship of fools the ship of fools which he wrote in 1509 he also wrote of course ecologues and pastorals but the ship of fools by alexander barclay in 1509 is something i thought of <clears throat> sharing with you right now we come to another important writer and that important writer is sir thomas watt sir thomas watt right and now we are uh, we are well aware of the fact that watts none of watts poems or writings were published during his lifetime okay and uh, his most famous work is totals miscellany that also we know totals miscellany we know was published in which year totals miscellany very famous work published in which work totals which year totals miscellany was published totals miscellany which year come on i know you all know about it why is it taking so long in the chat box is my net slow or is your hand slow because of the chilly winter that we all are all experiencing what is the reason any reason totals miscellany was published in which year that is my very uh, this is a question which has been asked so this is not an important question but i just want to taste be a test yeah 1557 thank god kumari jyoti at last it took so long for all of us to uh, come on totals miscellany i think we all know 1557 now my question is can you tell me the original title of totals miscellany totals miscellany's original title what is the original title of totals miscellany can you tell me the original title of totals miscellany original title of totals miscellany original title of totals miscellany can you tell me the original title of totals miscellany anybody is this question good is this question interesting is this question interesting original title of totals miscellany what is the original title of totals miscellany the original title of to totals miscellany is songs and sonnets songs and sonnets yes this is an interesting question right so the original title of totals miscellany is songs and sonnets songs and sonnets songs and sonnets totals miscellany right to totals miscellany songs and sonnets songs and sonnets by totals miscellany that is the title of totals miscellany songs and sonnets gorango das yes absolutely right who called him the father of the drabage father of the drab age who called him the father of the drabage is seen in the chat box can you tell me the name of the person who called him as the father of the drab age who called him the father of the drab age who called 
Sir Thomas Watt, the father of the Drabage. Who called Sir Thomas Watt father of the Drabage? Who called Sir Thomas Watt the father of the Drabage? The answer is C.S. Lewis, the father of the Dravage. C.S. Lewis. I hope you. I, I. I hope uh, that chat is can be seen in the chat box, right? Father of the Dravage. And if you look into the history of Sir Thomas Watt, he is also credited to start the Watt, which is called the Watt Rebellion, right? Watt Rebellion. Sir Thomas Watt also started the Watt Rebellion, right? And what is exactly is the Watt Rebellion? The Watt Rebellion was against the marriage of Mary 1 and Philip 2. Mary 1 and Philip 2. This was the Watt Rebellion. Sare. What and Sare we all know? Sare. Sare. Okay. Sare translated the Aeneid book 2 and 4. Virgil's Aeneid. Sare translated book 2 and book 4 of Virgil's Aeneid. Sare. Okay. So these are the, the Earl of Surrey, basically. What is the real name of Earl of Surrey? I think this is something you all are all aware of. Real name of Earl of Surrey? What's the real name of Earl of Surrey? What is the real name of Earl of Surrey? Come on, come on, come on. What's the real name of Earl of Surrey? Can you tell me the real name of Earl of Surrey? Henry Howard. Absolutely, Ekramul. Uh, Henry Howard, right. <clears throat> now, can you tell me whose disciple was he? Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey. Whose disciple? Kiska Chela, bolo. Kiska Chela, bolo, bolo, bolo. Whose disciple? Henry Howard was the disciple of who? Very famous person. We are all aware of. Henry Howard is the disciple, was the disciple of who? Tell me. Tell me. Kontha. Of course, he was the disciple of Thomas Watt. Thomas Watt. Who was the first English poet to publish blank verse? Who was the first English poet to publish in blank verse? First English poet to publish in blank verse. Who was the first English poet to publish in blank verse? Can you tell me the name? of the first English poet who published in blank verse. Can you tell me the name of the first English poet who published in blank verse? No? 
first english poet who published in black verse no of course sare sare was the first english poet right prachi you are absolutely right right ritika henry howard yes and that's the reason why because uh, what and sare they translated the petrarchan sonnets right because they translated the petrarchan sonnets hence they are also known as the father of english sonnets a simple it's a very common question father of english sonnets what and sare because they translated the petrarchan sonnets and it was what to introduce sonnet into english right but it was sare who gave it the rhythmic meter and the division into quatrains this is how they worked as a team so what introduced sonnet into english and sare gave the rhyming meter and the division into quatrains sare sonnets sare sonnets were addressed to who to who were sare sonnets addressed any answer to whom did sare address his sonnets hmm any idea i am waiting who sonnets who who was the person to whom sari addressed his sonnets no idea okay the answer is geraldine g e r a l a e i n e geraldine sare sonnets were addressed to geraldine right geraldine addressed sare's sonnets and we finish with something more something important and that is thomas norton and thomas sagwell thomas norton and thomas sagwell we all know is very famous for gobudak Gobudak is also titled as Ferex and Porex, which was published in fifteen sixty one. Okay, it was performed in front of which queen? And when? Any idea? It was performed. Ferex and Porex or Gobudak was performed. when and in front of which which authority which authority it was performed on 18 january 1562 18 january 1562 it was performed in front of queen elizabeth 1 okay Ferex and Porex or Gorbudak, which was uh, released in fifteen sixty one, it was performed on eighteenth January fifteen sixty two in front of Queen Elizabeth one. Can you tell me how many acts were there in Gorbudak? I uh, it's important because uh, those acts are also divisions under the writers. So can you tell me the acts, the number of acts that are there in Gorbudak? How many acts are there in Gobuda? 
or ferrex or porex. How many acts are there in Gobudak or ferrex or per porex? Ferrex and porex, basically. How many acts are there? Ritika Singh, two. No, not two. And I'm asking this question because it has some relation to the next question. So, Jyoti Banerjee, you are absolutely right. There are five acts. And now comes my next information that I would like to share with you all. And that is, some of you all might not be aware of, out of the five acts, the first three are written by Thomas Norton and the last two are written by Thomas Sagwill. There are five acts in Gorbudak. The first three are written by Thomas Norton and the last two are written by Thomas Sackwill. And that's the reason why I asked you this question. We come to the last question of the day. And the last question of the day is, name the first verse drama into English to employ blank words. The first drama in English to employ blank words. Tell me the name of the first drama in English to employ blank words. What is the name of the first? Go Budak, Somjoti. Absolutely. Go Budak or Ferex and Porex is the first drama in English to employ blank words. And with that, we come to the end of today's quiz and brainstorming. I'm sure you enjoyed today's session. I'm sure you are spreading the word or with your friends, with your colleagues about this quiz session that is going on every day from 9 p.m. Please, I'm sure you have subscribed to my channel. Please invite others too if you feel that there are some very potential questions that are asked in these quiz sessions. And I assure you that in the near future also, that is like from tomorrow, tomorrow will be an exclusive session on William Shakespeare. Don't miss it. We can have a longer session, depends. But we will have an exclusive session on William Shakespeare tomorrow. Please spread the word, join in large numbers. And uh, I'm sure you have subscribed the channel and please Ask others also if you feel that this channel has potential to be subscribed, if you feel these quizzes are value addition to your existing gamut of understanding of British literature questions, please do join me tomorrow again at 9 p.m. Till then, Namaskar. Take good care of yourself and your family. Good night for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care.